Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on electrostatics. This is video number five, and I'm going to discuss the electric field above a circular wire loop. I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstutorials.com, and if you'd like updates on what I'm doing, what videos I'm posting, and so on, you can follow me on Twitter at adambt503. So, the previous videos which are relevant to this are as follows. Number 3A and 3B, I discussed the electric field of a wire, or a, a line of I would say a line of charge or a wire with both symmetry and without symmetry and in video number four discussed the electric field of a wire again but this time in this in this shape of a square so what we're going to do this time is look at the electric field of a wire shaped as a circular loop so to set the problem up we need to draw it of course so this is this is our circle and we're trying to evaluate the field above the center of the circle at a point P so I'm going to coincide the z-axis with the, uh, we'll say, the axis of uh, P. The radius of our wire is going to be R. And like I said, we, we, we've set up here. And I'm going to define this angle here as theta. You can define theta wherever you like, but I'm going to define it there. So we need to remember what the formula for the electric field is, noting that I'm going to define 1 over... 4 pi epsilon 0 as k. Right, so if we do that, we know that the field, the electric field in general, is equal to k outside of the integral of lambda dl prime over squiggle squared, squared or separation vector squared times the separation unit vector. Now, this is of course assuming that we have a continuous linear distribution of charge, and that's what I'm going to assume. Now we need to think about this here. There is symmetry, of course, because the we'll say the wire is going to have both, let's say, an x component and it's going to have a y component. Let's say this is the x-axis. Probably better if I draw it. If I draw it, um, I'm sure you can get what you can get. What I'm saying. Let's just draw it explicitly here. Let's say this. There's my z-axis. There's my x, and there's my y. So we can see that the wire exists in the x-y plane and the field we're trying to measure is in the z-axis. So the point is that because we're going around in a circular loop, the horizontal components are all going to cancel out. So the only component which we're actually worried about or concerned about is the vertical component. So we need to somehow pick out the vertical component of our field. But because the field is, you know, we're talking about the vertical component, well, it's going to be living in the z-axis, so we talk about k-hat unit vector. Next, in order to pick out the vertical component, we need to use we need to use the cosine because if you look here, the vertical component of the, the separation vector corresponds with the cosine of theta. So we're going to multiply by the cosine of theta here like that. All right. So how do we evaluate this? Well, it's pretty straightforward. If you look at the separation unit vector, which is here, the separate or excuse me, the separation vector, not the separation unit vector, is equal to the square root of r squared plus z squared. Okay? That's pretty straightforward. And that means that cosine of theta is equal to z over the separation vector, of the magnitude of the separation vector at the very least. So these, of course, of course are both, both constants. But if we look at the integral, what we're going to be left with is that the integral of dl, because lambda is a constant, so it's going to be lambda outside of dl from 0 to 2 pi is going to be uh, 2 pi r, and then we have the, the, uh, the linear charge density lambda. So putting it all together, we're going to get the electric field above our, our circular loop is going to be 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, we're going to have lambda outside of twice pi r, we're going to have z, and we're going to have to divide by r squared plus z squared to the power of 3 over 2, and it's in the k hat unit vector direction. All right, pretty straightforward. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel, and you might also visit universityphysicstorials.com.